The Life of Lord Mahavira, Refuge to the Demon King, Part 5 of 6, on Between Master and Disciples, given in English on August 25th, 2019, in Newland Ashram, Taiwan, also known as Formosa. In the astral level, there are not only demons, yeah, not only hell, but there are different levels of heavens, and there are also teachers there, masters of high enlightened degree, like the master of Swami Yogananda, you remember? Yes. Uh, he came back from the astral level to embrace Master Yogananda, to prove to him, to tell to him that uh, he still loves him and he still exists. Yeah, it's not like he died and then master disciple uh, relationship cut. Yeah? Yeah. Because Yogananda, Paramhansa Yogananda, that's his title, we have to say the whole thing. I mean he's a great swan, I mean liberated saint. So his master give him that title because he knows that he's already great and liberated. Yeah. So he gave him this title Param Hansa Yogananda. Hansa means swan. Param means not ordinary swan, mean uh huh? Supreme. Supreme, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, param. In in India, some master, like some master of the light and south method, they call them Param Saint. Mean supreme saint. Okay? Supreme. And so Param Hansa. Hansa is a symbol of the purity and freedom. Because the, the, the swan normally the real swan, they live only in the, in the very high altitude lake. They drink only from the pure water. <laughs> and the legends say that they even eat only pearls. <laughs> There's some substance of purity like that. Yeah, they're not normal. Some swan are like that, from celestial uh, uh, abode, they come down to become a swan for a while. Just like one story I told you about one of the wives of one of the king, she reincarnated as a flamingo, the white flamingo, for a while. Yeah, she reincarnated as a human and even married and have children. And after that, she returned back to her god husband. Remember that story? Yes. Mm. So not all animals are from karma, okay? And not all animals are physical animals. Most of them are from celestial abode. They came down for some purpose, either personally or to help humankind. Even if they don't want to help humankind, their own celestial energy also brought down some uh, blessing to our world. So that's why we must truly respect our animals and any beings that we see. Children, you understand everything? You understand? You don't need translation? Yes, I uh, Okay, good, good. How come today we have children? I'm surprised. <laughs> All of you, 12 years and above, yeah? Wow. Wow. So young saint. Thank you. I told you I respect all of you. You know why? Because all of you are Buddhas <laughs> inside. You are God. It's just you have to play your role. I don't know why. <laughs> I'm too lazy to check out why you play this stupid role or this <laughs> terrible person or good person. I don't care anyway. I know, I know you are God inside. You have God nature inside, you have Buddha inside. So whatever role you play, I still respect you. And whether you harm me or you help me or you hate me, you love me, I respect all of you. This is just the role you have to play for the moment, the price you have to pay, the role you have to play, uh, the poison that has been dosed into you to make you forget. But I don't forget, okay? I don't forget who you are, who you really are. I don't mean just you sitting here, any of the beings on this planet, even trees, rocks, any being at all. We are all playing our part in the evolution history. 
we will arrive one day. Sooner, later, slow, fast, we will go home. Mm? Yeah. <laughs> yes, just like Lord Mahavira. Ah, by the way, I have to remember some other things. Remind me, Lord Mahavira and his karma, okay? If I forgot. Because I have not finished with the uh, Yogananda Paramhansa. <laughs> I got stuck with his name. <laughs> I forgot. His master is already fifth level saint, of course, before he uh, leaves our physical world. But he is appointed to be in the astral level to continue teaching. Maybe his disciples or some good beings over there. You remember that? Did you read the story of Yogananda autobiography? You did. If you did not, please read. Uh, please read. Uh, so that you understand more about spiritual practice and about masters and about disciples and about sentient beings and have respect for all. Hmm? Hmm. I read many a Buddhist story for you so that you will finally, maybe or gradually, oh, or one day remember that everyone has Buddha nature inside, all beings. Because remember, the Buddha has been incarnated as human, as uh, even swan, uh, golden geese, as uh, the deer, uh, as even heavenly king, as the kings on the planet, as friends, as some even shepherds which did something wrong to his hurts, etc., due to situation, or due to the karma he has to undertake in order to be there in that moment on this planet, for example. He incarnated many, many, many times, and he had to do many things even though he did not want to. His self, Buddha nature, never wanted to, but he had to due to the what? Contract sign. So not because you are a master or Buddha and you want to come to this world, you can immediately save sentient beings. No, you must make affinity with them, bad or good. Therefore, the Buddha liberates first five disciples, are the five blood suckers, really, that eat his blood in the former lifetimes. But he willingly gave, and he said, I will liberate you when I became Buddha. Even then, the people who harmed him <laughs> became his disciple. The first even, the first five, are not like somebody who did something good to him, give him milk to drink, give him food when he's hungry, give him arms, give him clothes, nothing. Eat his blood. And he came back, give them liberation, the first five. Do you remember or not remember? Yes. Did, did I tell you this story? Yes. All right, good, now you know. Wow. Therefore, you should know, <laughs> all beings has Buddha nature, or maybe a Buddha incarnated to help you undergo his affinity, mending, building, progress, uh, process. So all that story, not just to entertain you, huh? must think, huh? okay? and must digest it, and must let it become your self-realization. Because what I told you is my realization, not yours. But nevertheless, I'm trying to impart to you my understanding. Uh, somehow you will get it a little bit, and then from that capital, you will invest, <laughs> you will have more interest. You will cultivate it, you have interest, interest, interest and you will have more, and you will germinate. It become a bigger uh, a portion of your being, of your understanding, then you will realize it also, okay? That's what the teacher is for, otherwise you could read books. Because of the energy of the realization that imparted to you also, by talking, by seeing you, not just the words, okay? It's an invisible thing, the 70% imparting of wisdom, realization, understanding. 70% is not spoken. Speaking, 30% for 
or your brain only. The rest, your mind, your beings, your other bodies, and we understand and take it in. Yeah, slowly you digest and make it become yours. Hmm? Right. You see, I don't ever rest. <laughs> okay. <laughs> At home, even when I meditate, I have a note behind me on my diary so that I can note down something that may be of interest to you. Okay. When I eat, even I, when I remember something or know something, I immediately put down my food, go to get some paper, and and write it. Yeah, or get a phone and instruct something. I don't really ever rest. It's truly like that. Or when I'm sleeping, yeah, I have something, and I will know something. Then one day I tell to you something like that. For example, the the method, the difficult, dangerous method I just told you, yeah, I realized the other day, a few days ago, that this Sunday I have to tell you. Maybe somebody <laughs> asking this question at home, because if they have family, they cannot avoid this. So I thought maybe I uh, give you a little bit more help uh, in this direction. So you don't have to leave your family or even your pleasure, but try to make it into some more noble purpose. Try, at least you try. Just like you practice Kuan Yin Method in the beginning, you don't see much, only at the time of initiation. <laughs> but you're still trying, okay? Trying is also a kind of success, because that means you never leave the path. You're still there. Success or not, heavens will help. You trying, that is the best already, okay? Because in this world, trying is all we can. We have no power. We cannot resist too many things. We don't have enough time. We don't have enough opportunity. We don't have enough time, truly. I don't know how you do this at home, truly. Because I know I work very hard also. I hardly have time. I also very tired when I try to meditate. I understand everything that you're going through, because I'm going through the same. I have to work inside as well as outside, and doing business and paying tax, <laughs> whatever you know it. Whatever you know, I know. And I've also been attacked by karma, by sometimes bad disciples, sometimes bad people outside, jealousy, envy, all kinds of things, yeah? Yeah, all kind of karma also. It's not like <laughs> it's not like you see me look good, <laughs> smiling sweetly, telling you all these stories and wisdom. It is not like that at home. Okay, it's not like that. <laughs> but I learned to look good <laughs> and, and to feel good, at least when I'm with you. And all the things garbage I take care of alone <laughs> at home. Yeah, you don't need to know all that. Just like your parents normally don't tell you about the problems they face, you know, financial problem, hard time at work, harassment by bosses or by colleagues, and all that kind of things. Yeah. And when you have argument with each other, you close the door, you don't let the children hear it. Yeah, so similarly, that's how I can sympathize with you, that I can bear you, and I can still sit here and talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> and never mind, I try my best, and you try your best. Huh? I'm not blaming anybody. Okay, Lord Mahavira. Mm. Now, I remember. You probably asked me a question inside your heart. We have too many people who can't always ask questions, but I know what you ask. Like, why? For example, Lord Mahavira, only order to put some mm, hot molten lead into one person's ear one time only why he has to be tortured by that person when he became a god in heaven so many times. Yeah, you would ask me that question, some of you ask. Only one time, why are tortured so many times? Because the interest, yeah? It's just like when you do some good deeds, the Buddha say, Kung Tao Wu I mean, a lot, a lot of merits. Sometimes Buddha say, 90 eons still have that merit. And some story I told you, one person even offered Buddha just 
some little thing to eat one time, or even stones to offer to the Buddha with all respect and sincerity, because he had nothing else to offer, or just a very dirty piece of cloth because she has nothing else to offer. But then, 90 aeons always have a born with a beautiful cloth, and the cloth grow as a person grow. Yeah, for example, our life after life have a lot of richness and glory, yeah, and good position, because of the interest. Just like you put money in the bank, yeah, <laughs> one time, you don't touch it. If you touch it, then you will have some interest, but very little. But if you lock it up for 10 years, 5 years or more, you have a lot, lot, lot of interest. Right? You know that, right? Yes. Or if you don't know that, I can't help you. <laughs> Even I know. <laughs> Finally, I knew some, some stuff about the bank. <laughs> so the same. If we do good deeds, we have a lot of merit. Yeah? So the same. If we do bad deeds, a lot of interest also. A lot of bad things come, motive, multifold. So, Lord Mahavira came down as a human being, must accept all this, because this is a norm in this world. You know, in the physical world, must have give and take, must have sorrow and happiness, cannot have only one-way street. He has to accept that before he came down. He has to have to do that, so that later, when he practice, when he wants to be liberated, he has to pay back multiple times, one person after another, even from one person like Shangan. He tortured him by his own power many times, again, again, and again, non stop. And the Buddha also, and any saint. Therefore, have respect for all beings, because they have to undergo something. You never know, maybe they are Buddha. They came down to suffer so that they can have affinity with human beings or with other beings, you see? The Buddha don't only make good affinity because most people in this world, I mean, not most, but a lot of people, a lot of beings in this world are not so kind. So not like everybody come out when the Buddha go out, they would give him food or anything like that. They may be reject or they may be slander him, they may be scolding him, they may be uh, I say chasing him away, even then, it's still an affinity. Just like the first five disciples who eat his blood, suck his blood, but became his monks and get liberation directly from the Buddha, the first one even. So affinity that the saints are made with beings, not necessarily always good, pleasant, <laughs> happy, yeah, that it would be good, then all of the master would come down. And all beings can be Buddha or Master and, and liberate any other beings. They will be too good. No, the Maya will not allow that to happen. He wants, he wants his debt to be paid, even though it's all illusion, but for him, he make it real. That's why we must respect all beings, okay? You never know who is what. Respect mean doesn't mean you invite a bad person to come to your house and let him <laughs> let him do anything he wants with you and say, Oh, you are the Buddha and I forgive you, come come again. <laughs> come again, make trouble for me. <laughs> come again. No, it's not like that. Just like if some snake bites you, I told you many times, don't just invite him to your house and then give him food every day and sleep with him and please bite again because I know you have Buddha inside. <laughs> forgive him. Doesn't mean being stupid, huh? Avoid what you can if it makes you suffer pain. If you can, avoid it, okay? Forgive, but no more. <laughs>